Alright everyone, how's it going? Do another little video here of the uh, Ruger SP-101. Uh, this one's chambered here in 357. You can also shoot 38s through it, which is nice. 38s are usually cheaper to buy and have less recoil. So, if you don't like the recoil, heavy recoil of a 357 Magnum, you shoot the 38s. Go practice at the range with some 38s, yeah, you know, and then uh, put a 357 in if you want something a little more powerful for uh, self-defense afterwards. All right? You got that option. These grips uh, I put on there, they're made by Hogue. All right? They got the finger grooves. It's a little more comfortable for going to the range, shooting heavier rounds like the 357, like I have over here. All right? Uh, zoom in here. These are Federals. Hydroshock, I'm pretty sure. Quality stuff. Never had no issues. Uh, same thing with this firearm. Never had no issues with it. It's quality. I like it. It's a nice compromise between a home defense gun, carry gun, range gun, whatever, because it doesn't have the short little snub nose barrel. This is actually a three inch barrel. Alright, so that's nice to have. Going to the range, you got a little more sight radius. A little bit easier to be accurate with it. You got the hammer, so you can cock it back and have single action shots to make a nice uh, longer distance shots. You know, keep your, uh, you know, makes your trigger pull uh, a lot lighter. Once you cock that back, it's just, you just touch that trigger and it's, it's good to go. It goes off. So... Now for self-defense, chances are you're probably not going to do that. You're more likely just going to do a double action trigger pull, which is just pulling the trigger. It's heavier, yes, heavy, heavier trigger pull, but in a self-defense situation, you're not going to be worried about how heavy the trigger is or how much recoil it is. That's why 357s are good, because you're not going to really notice that heavy recoil when your life depends on it. You're actually going to want that extra power. Okay, unless you can't keep that round, that 357 round, on target because of the recoil, then you might want to go to a 38 where it might be easier for you to keep on target. Because you want to make sure they all go where you want them. Because you're accountable for every round. If you miss and it keeps going and hits something else or somebody else, you know, that came from you. You, know, you got to own up to it. So make sure you can hit what you shoot, what you're shooting for. Practice, 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 all right? Now the original grip that came with it was this one here. All right, it's a little smaller. Some people like it because it's easier to conceal under your clothing. All right, I like them both. I'm not sure. I, I always go back and forth. One here, I might have this on for a few months, and then I might put this one on for a few months. So it's, I'll change them up here in a minute so you can see the difference. But uh, you know, this thing, this one, this grip here, it's like 15 bucks or something. So, you know, you get it and try it out and see if you like it, you know, you might like it. Alright, the holster here behind it is uh, made by Alien Gear. It's an in-the-waistband holster. I kind of like it, it's alright. It's got the neoprene style material on it. What I mean by that is, it's got, that's a soft back, it's flexible doesn't rub up against your skin you know it's this is like plastic or kydex or something and it locks in there all right so this goes in the waistband so you won't even really see much besides the uh, the grip sticking out and there's a lot of different options out there you can choose from this is just one of them all right like I said here, let me take this off. This comes off with a little screw on the bottom, which I don't have it in there because I wanted to quick show you how to, how to replace them. So you would take the screw out, and then this one here has a screw right there. You would take that out. And once that comes out, these little plastic pieces, these inserts, these pop off. You can replace these with other ones that are different colored or even wooden ones that go in there or 
they make some that are ivory or something or bone. They're pretty neat. Just makes your gun look different, you know. I might do that one day. Get something to make it a little fancier besides this plastic black one. Anyway, so when you pull them out, the, both sides would come out. Take it out. There would be this pin, which is not there because I have it. I took it out already, but it would be in there. And that just holds it on to the frame here in that little hole so it doesn't slide off. So to put it on and take it off, that would have to come out. And slide that on there. There you go. So that's what it would look like with those grips. They're thinner, so if you're going to carry it, it's, you, know, you might like these better. I don't know. It's up to you. This is what they come with. I'll leave it on there now for the rest of the video, but so you would put these back in, you'd put the pin in first, and then you'd put these back on, then you'd put the screw in. Simple, real simple. If you can't figure that out, I don't know, you got problems. So uh, the front sight is uh, just a ramp, and it's black. I put some nail polish on, some fluorescent orange, and it really helps out with, you know, uh, trying to pick up the sight. If I can. Why can't I do that? Anyway, <laughs> let's try it. It's kind of like that. Hold on. There we go. It's not going to zoom in, right? It's not going to focus. There we go. Kind of like that. Anyway, you get the idea. Stainless steel, which is good, especially on humid days like today. You know, very easy to clean. I got mine polished up really good. I uh, use this stuff called Mother's Mother's Mag or something. It's for like it's for like polishing up chrome wheels or anything metal really. It's just a polishing cream. You rub it on and keep rubbing it, and you wipe it off, and it really shines it up. And I get fingerprints all over it now because it's like a mirror finish. But uh, the trigger pull in this thing. Is uh, it's pretty heavy when you first get it, somewhere around 14 pounds. But on a on a self-defense firearm, you don't want a light trigger. You want something with some some weight to it, because you don't want to have it back like this, and also boom, it accidentally goes off because it's so light. You know, you want to make sure that it goes off when you want it to go off, and not accidentally. And then you got the target you're shooting targets at the range at some distance. You can always cock it back, and then you got a really light single action trigger. You just touch it. You just touch it, and it goes off. All right. Good thing about double action when you just this is double action. That single action. Good thing about this. Good thing about double action is uh, you shoot and you pull the trigger. For some reason. The round doesn't go off, who knows why, but you can have bad rounds every now and then. All you gotta do is pull the trigger again and hope that the next one is a good round. So, there you go. Hopefully that one would work. So in a self-defense situation, for whatever reason, that first round don't go off, just pull it again and you should be good to go. Now in a semi-automatic firearm, you would have to do other things. You know, the slide would, you know, you have to pull a slide back, chamber a new round, maybe get a new magazine. Who knows what the issue is? There's always a, there's always something, a little more you have to do besides just pull the trigger again. In most semi-automatics, but with the revolvers, it's pretty simple. That's why people like them. To open it up, there's a button here. I know some of them you push this way, some you pull back this way with Ruger, or at least the Ruger the SP101 here. You push, push that in, and you can. Use your fingers on this side and just push the cylinder out, just like that, All right? And this thing's really clean. I take care of them as you should. I mean, if you're going to depend your life on something like this and possibly use it to, you know, save yourself or a family or whatever, just you you want something that's reliable and you got to take care of them. It'll last you a lifetime. And to close it, you push on this part here. You don't you don't hit the cil you don't hit the cylinder, you don't swing it shut, you're gonna hurt it, you're gonna mess it up after a while. This part here. 
where I'm rubbing my thumb on. It's called the crane. You push on it. And then give the, the cylinder a little turn to make sure it locks in there properly. Right? Open it up. Push it on through. Close it back up. And give the cylinder a little turn to make sure it locks. So that's a real quick uh, review on this. I like it. I could definitely give it a thumbs up. Right? Uh, I recommend them. It's heavy. Right? It's got some weight to it. I think it's about 27 ounces. Okay, so it's something that it's got some weight. You're gonna feel you got it, but it helps with the recoil too. So that's nice. The barrel on this is about a little over three inches, 3.06. I think the specs say on the website. Um, the overall length, and I guess it's from here to here would be eight inches. You know, they make other ones with shorter barrels, like around here. This is the three inch. They make ones that are four inches, so they're probably around here. I think they even make something a little bigger, but this is a good compromise right in the middle there. I will have this for the rest of my life and hand this down to my kids. You know, that's a good one. So there's a here's a knife I got. I'm going to start showing a knife during each uh, gun review. This is the uh, Tough Light. It's made by Cold Steel. Cold Steel makes some good stuff. Some people like them, some people don't, but I don't know. I think they're quality. All the stuff I've had from Cold Steel has always been pretty darn good. There's a lot of good companies out there, though, so you got options. But this is, you know, it's light. It's, all my knives are usually black. To this time, I decided to go with something different. I went with blue. I like these finger grooves here. You can really get a good grip on it. It's good for at work when I, uh, you know, cutting boxes, open, opening mail at the house, uh, cutting rope, you know, whatever. Just little daily things. It's always good to have something. I like the, the blade style because it's straight across. Um, easy to sharpen. That's why I like that. It doesn't, it's not curved or nothing. Now the top is curved. You know, it just comes down like this, and it's called a. There's a couple names I think. Really, it's a, a sheep's foot is one name. People call it a sheep's foot, and some people call it a a, a, a windcliff, winecliff, something like that. Probably saying it wrong, but uh, that's the style, right? I like them. So I got a bunch of knives, and I'm gonna start showing them here and there with you know different firearms that I have as well. So. Check them out. These things run around, uh, what is it, somewhere around like 550-ish, you know, brand new. You can find them cheaper used or whatever, but it's definitely worth the money. You'll have it for the rest of your life. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a tough gun. All right, well, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a little uh, understanding of, you know, why I chose this gun, because it's good. Take care.